hello and welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you guys are doing good so today i'm going to start a new series on mendix and we are going to create a simple application that allows user to input a number and find out whether it's even or odd so without any further delay let's get started so you need to first open mendix studio pro and create a new project by clicking on this create new app button and on the very next screen you will see a couple of options to get started with basically you need to choose your starting point i'm gonna go ahead with blank web app okay and then just click this use this starting point and here you need to provide a name to your application okay let's call it even odd checker then hit create app button okay now it's gonna take a couple of seconds of yours because once you hit create app mendix automatically starts setting up everything you need like databases user roles and default pages so let's be patient and allow it to do the needful so once your app is created you land on this page on this home page okay and in this section in the system section you can manage your app setting and configure security roles okay and domain model is where you define your app's data structure here you can create entities define attributes and establish relationships between them okay and next up is the home page this is the first screen users will see when they log in so now let's set up a non-persistent entity to hold a user input for that you have to go to domain model and from the top of the domain model click entity and drop it over here so now let's understand the difference between a persistent and a non-persistent entity. The orange color indicates that this is a non-persistent entity and to store that in the database you want to make it persistent, right? As soon as you make it persistent, the entity will become blue. So you can easily distinguish it from the orange non-persistent entity, okay? So basically persistent entities that are in blue color are stored in the database while non-persistent entities that are in orange color only store the data for the duration of the client session. You have to double click on this newly created entity to open its properties and give it a name. Let's say even odd. This is going to be a non-persistent entity. So you can set the persistible to no. Then add an attribute by clicking new let's call it number and set the type to integer which is already set by default and then you just have to click ok the entity has been created and you can see it's in orange color since it's a non-persistent entity so this entity will temporarily hold the number the user inputs ok next i need a button on the home page on click of which another page should open so let's go back to home page and drag and drop a button widget from the toolbox onto the home page where we want it to appear okay in the search panel just type in button let's go with this button drag it and drop it wherever you want it okay on the properties pane on the right set the caption to whatever you want okay let's set it to even odd checker now you have to double click on this to open its properties and you will see this on click event in the event section and set on click to create object to fill in the details on the page that will be open on click of this button so this create object is going to be your on click action okay and then entity you need to set it to the entity which you have just created okay that is even odd select it and on click page you have to select the page which should be open on click of this button okay i'm gonna click on select and under this my first module you can see only one page that is the home page and that gets created by default okay so now let's go ahead and create a data view to accept user input i'm gonna click on this new now we will have to select a page template 
let's select the first one and click ok click ok to close its configuration window and this is the form which we have just created click this and you can see mendix has already created the input form for you this is the data view which is set to use the even odd entity okay let me just click this and you can see the entity even odd okay and within this data view we have this text box for user input which is bound to the number attribute of our even odd entity okay let me click this to open its properties and here you can see attribute has been mapped to number of a even odd entity okay this has been bound to this attribute number attribute okay and then we have these two buttons cancel and save on click of cancel we are cancelling the changes and then we have this button that will trigger a micro flow to check if the number is even or odd so let's open its properties and see what the button action is set to okay on click it is going to save changes but on click of this button we need a micro flow to be triggered to check if the number is even or odd so here from the options you need to select call a micro flow now you will have to select the micro flow which you want to call we have to create one okay okay in that case i'm gonna click new and here you need to provide a name to your micro flow this micro flow is gonna handle the logic for checking if the number is even or odd okay let's name it check even odd even odd click ok and here you can see a microflow has been created okay i'm gonna click ok to close its properties and now let's go ahead and configure our microflow so here we have this parameter which mendix has created for you so this parameter is used to receive a number input during the session which is only needed temporarily for processing so what happens is like when the user enters a number in a form the application creates an instance of that temporary input and passes the value to the micro flow and then this micro flow processes this input and provides as you can say output without saving any of the information permanently so just to show you guys how it has been configured let me open its properties and here you can see we have a drop down for data type and in here we have a couple of options like object list boolean date and time decimal okay and the object has been selected as the data type then you have to select the data type which is nothing but your entity then a name has been provided to this parameter even odd so this is basically gonna take input from the user and going to pass that information into the micro flow for processing okay now inside the micro flow we will use a decision to check if the number is even or odd drag a decision into the micro flow place it over here set the condition in the expression to check if the number that the user inputs leaves the remainder as zero when divided by two first things first you need to use dollar symbol which basically signifies that you are referring to the the current entity instance i repeat the current entity instance select even or that's the name which we have given to the parameter right even odd okay and then this slash and here you can see the number this is how you access the attributes okay number and then we are going to use mod function mod 2 is equal to 0 if it is equal to 0 it's gonna take the true path we will show a message based on the condition so now we are going to add a show message action for both paths drag this action activity and drop it over here this is going to be my true path double click on this and select your action as show message so for the true path you can set the message in this template okay let's set it to the number is even this is going to be the true path and for the false path i'm gonna add another action activity okay over here and gonna set the action to show message 
and for this false path i'm gonna set the message to the number is odd cool click ok so this is going to be a false path and this is going to be a true path these are two outgoing paths now you have to double click on this connector and set the condition value to true because this is a true path and this is the activity that should occur if the condition is met connect the node properly as you have set the condition for this path to true so automatically this has been set to false okay now we need another end event to occur after this activity right so just right click on this dot and click end event connect it properly to the end event there we go now i'm gonna run my application to see it in action but before you run your application you have to make sure that you save all your changes by clicking the save button or using the shortcut control s okay click on the run button in the toolbar in play icon when you hover over it it says run locally click this and it asks you if you want to save these changes and continue yes save and continue mendix is now compiling your project which might take a moment and especially if it is the first time you are running it and when your app is ready you can see this view app button gets enabled click this and there we go we have this button and on click of which a form should open let's click this okay we have a form and we need to input a number let's check 34 click save it says the number is even which is correct i'm gonna click ok but now we would also want to clear the values in fields after clicking save changes button for that we need to use another activity right after this show message activity okay to clear the value in the field i'm gonna drag and drop action activity and place right after show message activity double click to open its properties and we are going to use change object action select it okay and then as the input you have to select the object which you want to change that is even odd and then you have to select the attribute that you want to change the value of okay by clicking this new select the member that is number set its value to zero okay click ok to close this configuration window likewise we have to configure for the false path gonna just drag it and drop it over here open its properties select change object okay and then select the object as the input okay and then click new to select the attribute which you want to change the value of and set the value to zero okay close its properties and now we are good to save our changes okay i'm gonna click this icon again to run my application since you have made some changes to your microflow it asks you again whether you want to save these changes and continue yes save and continue and your app is ready to view click this view app click this even or checker and this time i'm gonna input some odd number and let's see what it says it says the number is odd and you can see it has cleared the field but after clicking the save button i want to navigate the user back to the home page let's see what happens when i click this cancel i am being navigated back to the home page which should happen ideally let's now configure the same for a save changes button okay so right after this change object action i'm gonna place another activity okay select the connector and double click this activity place it over here i'm gonna select the action as show home page in the same manner we have to configure the false path select this connector double click this activity and place it right after this change object activity open its properties and 
select the action as show home page okay we are done i'm gonna rerun it by clicking this icon yes i want to save and continue and my app is ready click this button to view your app click this even or checker you need to input a number let's go with 200 okay save the number is even and I have been navigated back to my home page because inside the micro flow we have set the target page to our home page let's test this one more time for false path I'm gonna input some odd number this time 341 save the number is odd correct and the user that is me has been navigated back to the home page so that's pretty much for the day. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more such tutorials. I'll see you guys in my next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.